What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I figured I would make this video because I've been doing so many videos of painting lately and they just have been one after the other after the other that I haven't really had time um, to really show you guys exactly what I use. So I figured why not make a video and show you guys all of the things that I use when I paint a house. Now, there's a lot of stuff, um, I guess, when you're a professional that you need to have in order to paint a room. But if you're just a homeowner, a DIYer, I had to narrow it down to 10 things that I thought would make you uh, successful with painting a room and having it look good. If you're just painting one room, you probably could borrow a few things here or there, but if you're painting more than one room, it's gonna save you so much time and energy and stress by just going out getting all these because you can paint one room, save most of the stuff, paint another room, and not have to keep buying this stuff every single time. So the first thing is a drop cloth, which that's one of these right here. This is the first thing that I do every time I go into somebody's house is I lay down a drop cloth. The reason for that is because no matter how hard, me personally, I try, I always drip paint on the drop cloth. It just is inevitable, it just happens. And the only way for me to truly prevent that is to cover the entire floor with a drop cloth. So that's the first thing. That's the first thing I recommend is getting a drop cloth. Um, you can get the plastic ones, but the problem with that is it, the paint doesn't soak in as well. Let's say you, you accidentally step on somewhere where you got a drip of paint, and then you might track it all through the house. So I recommend a canvas cloth like this. One drop cloth will get you pretty far. The only problem with that is you're going to have to move it as you go. But if you're painting a room, you're not in a hurry. It's your own house. No big deal. One should cut it. Number two, rags. This goes back to cleaning. Most likely if you haven't painted before or you've only painted a couple times, you're gonna drip paint somewhere, whether it be the trim or you might get it somewhere on the floor and having a wet rag handy is the key to getting the drips cleaned up. So make sure you have one of those. It's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. You gotta have a couple of rags with you. We got the two areas covered that are gonna protect the floor and also clean up spills. This next thing isn't a necessity, uh, but depending on how bad the walls are or what's going on with them, you may need one. I always make the walls as smooth as possible before I do any painting. This will go a long way. If you got like a little piece of something on the wall, sand it down real quick and make your surface a little smoother. Now don't get me wrong, you're not gonna, you're not gonna sand you know, the whole room with this thing, but it'll at least get some, some things knocked off the wall if there's something that's on there. The next step is we got to try to protect any of the wall paint from getting on the door trim and the baseboards and the only way to do that is with tape, masking tape. This is the Frog Tape brand. I'm pretty partial to this. I use it all the time and I just have the best luck with this. The Blue Scotch brand, I don't have good luck with that. I don't really care for it. I like this a lot better. Now if somebody's watching this and they're like, oh professional painters don't use tape, that's been a debate forever. Whether you use tape or not as a professional. That's completely up to you. But if you're a DIYer, you're a novice, you don't paint all the time, I recommend taping everything off first. All right, so we got the tape. Now, what are we gonna put the paint in? Painting tray, okay? Gotta have one of these. This one's obviously pretty beat up. Now, you can put the paint directly in here. If you're only gonna do it one time, no big deal, but I don't recommend it because you can always use this again for some for touch-ups or whatever. So what I recommend is also going and getting a paint tray liner. This is a, a big uh, stack of them. You don't have to get that many. I think they're like 50 cents a piece. Grab yourself a couple. This goes right in here, and it's gonna save you a lot of effort later on from having to try to clean this. The next thing, how are you gonna put the paint on the wall? You're gonna need to get yourself a paint roller. This is a nine inch roller. This is a pretty brand. I use these all the time. Okay, not only the roller, but what else do you need? You need a roller cover, okay? This is what I use all the time. Pretty white dove, works great. I've had no issues with them. I've had good luck. The paint goes on well, so that's what I use. Now the next thing to go with the roller. So if you hold the roller like this and you're gonna do a wall, let's just say you got standard eight foot ceilings, you're gonna be going up and down, up and down. You're, you're gonna expel so much energy doing it that way and your back by the end of the day is going to be killing you. So I had to throw this in there, an extension pole. Now this is an extension pole made by Purdy. This goes right on the end of this specific roller. Some of them clip in like this one, but then some of them don't. The cheaper ones, what they normally do is they screw on. At any rate, get yourself one of these, no matter what, it's gonna save you a lot of energy. It's gonna save you a lot of back aches when you're done with your painting project. Okay, now we've got the walls rolled, but 
there's just areas on the wall near the trim, near the corners, near the ceiling, where you're not gonna be able to get it with a roller. So what are you gonna do? A paintbrush. You got to have a paintbrush. And not only a paintbrush, you need to have a good paintbrush. I don't care if you're painting one room or you're gonna paint 10 rooms. A good paintbrush is gonna make you better at painting and it's gonna make you so less stressed out. The way a good brush should work is once you put the paint on the brush, it should lay out on the wall nice and easy. The cheap brushes just don't do it. They're not gonna last and they're just not worth it. Spend the extra money and get a better brush. I'll show you guys and bring them closer, but these are the two that I normally use. I've been using this one for a really, really long time. And recently I started using this one. Now this is an Old Fields brush and actually I did another video but I had a couple people asking about it, so hopefully you guys can see that it's kind of glary, but. Out of these two, this one by far is the best one I've used yet. But it's a little harder to get this, you gotta get it on Amazon. If you're just going into the store and doing a weekend project, you should be able to find these at your big box stores. That's a three inch brush. I tried to figure out what's the last tool that's a necessity for somebody that's painting a room that doesn't do it all the time. And this is it. This is what they call a five in one tool, okay? And the reason for this is one, it opens up a can of paint with this end here, okay? You don't wanna use a screwdriver because you're gonna damage the uh, the lid of the can. You don't wanna do that. You wanna make sure the can seals nice and tight, okay? So another feature of this is this right here. And what this is for is when you're done using this and you're gonna clean it, you take the edge of this onto the roller cover and that's how you clean it. What it does is it squeezes all that excess paint out and then when you're rinsing it off, I just keep doing it and move the roller cover and it just gets it nice and clean. So that's what that edge is for. Another thing that you can use this for, which um, it, it might be a little bit more difficult, but you could still do it because I do it sometimes in a pinch. So, um, you know, you got this part here to clean the roller cover, but this part right here, for little tiny holes now, nothing crazy, but little tiny finish nail holes, you can take this, also use this as a spackle knife. Okay, the next thing you can use it for, I don't know, I'm gonna try to get that in the camera, but see that edge there? So that edge is beveled. And one thing you can use that for is to scrape things, okay? Last but not least, the last feature of this tool is that right there. So what I've seen it used for, which I've done it, is uh, to take off outlet and uh, switch plate covers. All right guys, so that's it. Quick, informative. I think these are 10 things that you have to have if you're painting a room in your house and you've never done it before, or you're just getting into painting, um, you have to have these, these essential tools in order to uh, do a good job and have a good finish on the walls once you're done. All right, so that's it. Hopefully, going over these, this gives you guys the confidence to paint your own house. Don't forget, guys, give me that thumbs up, share these videos, smash that bell, subscribe to my channel, drop a comment in the comment section below, and we'll see you on the next video.